Hey guys, it's Simply Imaginary People, and I was asked to do a tutorial on how to convert TS4 objects to TS3. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to install Sims 4 Studio. And a newer version of TSRW, the newest one, if you want to make disks and like other things that have slots for objects. Right, so what you're going to do once you've installed Sims 4 Studio is you're going to go to Document, Sims 4 Studio, and there's a folder called mods and you literally put the sims4 object you want to convert into there then you're just going to load sims4 studio you can press object and you're going to custom and you're going to pick which object you want to convert you can see I've got a lot I want to do so I'm just going to pick this one right go to next and save it somewhere so I've got a folder called Isabella desk where is it and I'm just going to save this as disk. Right, you will get this. So you need two things. First, you need the mesh. So lod high export mesh. Just going to save it as disk. You'll need Blender for this because it won't do it unless you have Blender. Right, and then it'll pop up. And texture. So you can see up here there's quite a lot of textures you can click through. Now usually if I want to make a recolorable Sims 3 object, I look for a texture that is just plain color. So just white or just black or something. As we can see all of this has wood, which means we'll probably end up making our own texture, so I don't bother exporting one. This is probably the easiest way to go anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that folder now and I'm going to open the Blender file. And you'll see it opens up. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the rig because I don't like the dots on top. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open TSRW. Let's wait for that to load because if I want this disk to be functional it has to have the same height and start at the same point so that the sim doesn't like float in mid-air or the laptop isn't floating in mid-air so I need a reference of which shape it needs to have. So I'm just going to go on create new project object surfaces desk and I'm going to pick one that's similar to mine. So obviously for desk there's one where you can sit on the left or the right or ones where you can sit in the middle and I want one you can sit in the middle. So I'm just going to pick this one. That looks close enough. I'm going to let it open. Awesome. Right. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mesh, High Level of Detail, and I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export it once as .wuzzo and name it EA. And I'm going to export it a second time as dot object, also name it EA. Right, and then I'm just going to go back to my Blender and I'm going to go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and import the EA disk. And here you can see our disk is a bit too high and way too far backwards. Like, it needs to line up at the front because the disk is going to be here, so it's going to be floating in midair, and the sim's arm is going to be like here when it's on the mouse, so that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two Sims 4 meshes using Shift Select and I'm going to, oh, I think maybe I don't know, I was just being an S. There we go. And I'm just going to move them forward until they kind of line up with the front of this desk. And then I'm going to press scale, only going to the disk mesh, I'm just going to press S for scale and Z for height. And I'm just going to shrink it down a bit. Right, now that it kind of has the same height, I am going to hide this group so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hide this one and I'm going to press 
five on my numpad and then one on my numpad. And you can see that you can see this red line that's pretty much the floor. And it's on the floor so it, it's not floating. Right. Now I've got this, I've also got my drop shadow mesh which I need. And now I want to assign it and uh, make it a new texture because obviously I need a multiplier that doesn't have wood texture on it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this materials tab here and delete this material so that it's white. And then I'm just going to go to edit mode and press A to select everything and you'll see that you can see the outline here. Now what I've also got to do is I am literally going to press this button on the EA meshes. These are the EA ones, otherwise it will render them as well. And on this bottom one, and on the ring. The lamp I can leave up. I'm just going to press image, new image, and a black image will come up. Then I'll go to this world tool and make sure ambient occlusion, environmental lighting, indirect lighting is on, and my samples on 20. And then I'm going to go back to the camera, make sure bake ambient occlusion, but a bit margin of 1. I'm just going to press bake. And now it's messing around saying it has no objects. <sighs> Not quite sure why. Okay, I'm doing it. Sometimes it just messes around and doesn't like it. Okay, and you'll see that it's baking my multiplier over here. So I'll let that finish. It's going to take a while because my computer doesn't like me running the recording software alongside Blender and Mailchimp. And Photoshop and TSRW. Nearly done. Right, now I obviously want to test if this multiplier looks good, so I'm going to switch here to material and I'm going to go to my materials and texture tab here and I'm going to say new. I'm going to scroll down to image here and click on this image and it'll have this, uh, this image here. Press on it. Titled and wait, is it not doing it? Um, I'm just going to wonder why it's not doing what I want it to do. There we go. Right now, if I go to object mode, you can see this is what it looks like, and it actually looks super good. Right, so that's done. I'm going to go to image, save as image, and I'm just going to call it untitled something. Right, now what I need to do is I need to export my edited mesh. So I'm going to go to object mode, I'm going to right click the drop shadow and right click the desk because I want both, and go to export object. I'm going to click selection only and unclick right materials and save it as desk and then I'm going to go to milkshake and import it. Import weight from object, desk. Now it's being a pain in the ass again where it only has one group even though it should have two. So mm -hmm. 
It kind of needs to have two different materials for it to export as two different groups. Sometimes it doesn't. Oh, I know it's not doing it. Right. File, export to wavefront object, and I'm going to say write materials because it's being a pain. Okay, so if we import it now, it should be two groups, yes. Now I just got to delete the materials again here. But I have my two groups. So. So I'm going to go to the desk I had open, and I'm going to look. So there's always two groups. There's the mesh group and the shadow group. So you can see if I click the three dots, this says drop shadow, and this one says something like flong or something, which is the normal mesh, flong. So group zero needs to be my normal mesh, and group one needs to be my shadow. So this one needs to move up because this is my mesh, and it's going to be called group zero. This one is my shadow, and it's just going to be called group one. Right, now I need to assign bone so that it actually functions. So I'm going to, go to import TSRW object, and I'm going to import the EA one. Delete the shadow because I don't need it, and I'm going to make sure that I only select the EA mesh and then I'm just going to go to joints I'm just going to press show because if I show you it's all one color so this is the bone so then I'm just going to select my desk by just pressing select here and go to joints and just say assign and as you see it turns yellow so now I can delete the EA one and I've got this now I'm just going to go to export TSRW object and call it desk. Right, perfect. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to open hopefully the new TSRW, yes, 2.2. And I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to open that image that we baked. So our multiplier. Now, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Hue Saturation and put this to minus 16. Oops, not 26. And then I'm just going to eye drop a grey. Oh, 103, that's not very good. 122 is too light, dark. You've got to try and get the grey to 136-ish. 137, that will do. Good. And I'm going to save this as a DDS. This is my multiplier. Right. Now, obviously, I want to make it recolorable. So, the issue is I don't know which part is which. I'm just going to go back into Blender. And I'm going to press the sync button. It pops up. Here we go. Um, I'm going to select these areas that are already nicely shown. Okay, so this is the outside. These are the boxes. This is the roundabout bits, and those are the legs. So that's like four areas. So now I've got to see how I want to do this. I might just go back and just here and check what they did. So I'm probably going to do the inner bit, the legs, and the bit. So I want this area to be one color, and then I want this area with this area to be one color. Okay, so now I know what I'm doing. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to select this area. Oops. If I press shift I can select more. And just make sure 
I select all that bit and it doesn't really go far down enough here. I think that's a bit too much. And I'm going to pick FF0000 and bucket that bit. And then I'm going to pick this area. FFFF00 pink bucket it. And then select this area FF00 FF. And pink bucket that. And just save as DDS UV mask actually, but UV shorter. Right. Now in my new TSRW, I'm going to do the same thing, just going to open this object. I could have done this from step one, but I never know which one of mine is which. Right, that one's close enough. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mesh, High Level of Detail, Import, Disk. And I'm going to go to Mesh, Medium Level of Detail, and because it doesn't have a very high poly count, I'm just going to import the same one. Oh yeah. But to do that, I need to delete Group 1, because it doesn't have a drop shadow. In Milkshape, I'm just call this Disk Medium Rod. And import my Medium one without the drop shadow. And I'm going to go to Shadow High Level of Detail, press this button, and pick the first group under High Detail. I'm going to go to Medium Level of Detail, Shadow, Refresh button, and pick the group under Medium Detail. And go back to High Level of Detail so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I'm just going to go to Textures, and for Mask, I am going to import my V. I could have done it for four colors, but I decided not to. Yes, something pops up. And for multiplier, I'm going to import my multiplier. Right, and for specular, I'm going to import. It's like a not quite black gray. Okay, awesome. Now I have my disc. Now I'm gonna give it some nicer wood colors because these are ugly. Not that EA has particularly nice woods. I'll just use this one, see what that looks like. Not very nice. Now, you might need to up the tiling. That just makes the texture a bit smaller so it doesn't look completely ridiculous. Very boring. Right, this one. Gonna pick a nice color. Let's have a nice foresty green, maybe. And for the legs, I think I want them white, just to make it easy for me. I'm going to up the tiling on all of them to 6, so that it doesn't look so ridiculous. And there we go, okay, the white looks absolutely dreadful. Not 
not that this really matters much what colour it is because you can change it in game but obviously sometimes it looks ridiculous. Maybe go back to white and just change this to something more normal. Oh well. Anyway, right, the last thing we really need to do, well, a couple of things, is we rename it, so I'm going to say this, simply mx ends Isabella desk, that's the name of it, and I'm just going to, the description will just be converted by simply so that people can find it later from the description. Righty ho. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to slots. And I'll just guide you through this. You can see this pretty much tells you the slot. Now, bones are literally where things are. So if you click them, these are root bones. So this is like where sims can come and stand. And then you've got this. This is the computer bone. So this tells you, oops, it's not freezing. It tells you where the computer is going to be. This tells you where the homework is going to be. This tells you where the chair will be, and this tells you where the deco objects will be. Now, as I can tell you, the desk was smaller. So this deco object here is somewhere right in the corner. I wouldn't move the bones for computer and homework, just because it's just going to mess up how the sim sits, but these, I'm just going to move them if they let me move them so that they are actually on the desk preferably a bit higher than the desk That one is on the desk, that one not quite. That one definitely not. And that one also definitely not. Right. Once I've moved those bones so that the objects I put on there don't fall off, you can check through some of the other stuff. <clears throat> so these are container entries, you need to probably edit these too if they haven't edited themselves. Which, as you can see, they usually adapt to what you've changed <coughs> for the bones. Right. In fact, entries are just computer and stuff like that. Don't fiddle with that. There we go. That pretty much means now you have a functional object. Which means all you got to do is go to edit project contents. Now, just to make sure it doesn't overlap the EA object, I like to press renumber, click second instance, make random, okay, no, no. Let it load. Now you can see it all has the same number, and a new number at that. And behind you, should actually see the object, but it's not doing it. Export to package, and I shall call this object table simply an existence is a bella desk. Done. Okay. Hmm. It's being an ass and change the colors again. Just them again. Sometimes when you renumber it decides to replace some things for some reason. But just make sure I didn't replace anything else. I'll just have white and white. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, it seems to have replaced literally everything. Except my images. Okay, still kept the name. Just make sure I kept my bones. Yeah. Just decided to change my textures. Right, edit project contents. Just export this again. Ooh, I know what I forgot. Make sure there's not any aberrant recolors. I don't want any other recolors, so I'm just going to delete. If you want to keep the textures from the from the Sims 4 one, then instead of importing a multiply, you can import images you exported from Sims 4 Studio. So I could export one of these images, which I have done, and I'll show you how this looks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import the original multi. I imported it as a PNG, so just press continue, it also works. Press done. Do you want to replace? No, otherwise it will replace my original multiplier. Now all i got to do is I've got to press false for the two textures because it's not going to be recoverable. And for the first pattern, all I need to pick is solid color and pick a grayish gray. Somewhere around 137 ish. Voila. There we go. You can have that as a recolor. Right. Now, I'm just going to export this again. And there you go. You have converted a functional object. This is just on the example of the table. Obviously, other stuff has other bones. Some things have two bones, so just got to work off of your EA objects to see what has what and test it in game. If you need more help with specific objects, you can just tell me. But yeah, so that concludes this tutorial.